What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Roster Bubble Series video. Thank you for joining me. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you know when live stream pops or drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. Share this out as well. It's very dead time in the NFL offseason. Nothing much is going around, so might as well introduce this to some other Giants people, some other people on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Also, any other social media that exists. And, uh, you know, any other football fans as well. I mean, you know, get them to watch this video. Probably have a huge portion of my viewers that are unsubscribed. And, you know what? Subscribe to the channel. A lot of fun stuff happens here. We are at 449 subscribers as of this recording. So, with that being said, let's get that to 450. Let's keep building the milestones on this channel. And that's all thanks to you guys. So, another Roster Bubble Series video. These types of videos, I go through a player who is on the roster bubble who may or may not be cut, their background, competition, how they could win win one of the spots on the roster, how they could lose one of those spots on the roster, and then followed up by a prediction at the end. Today's candidate is Matt Gano, offensive tackle. He was signed by the New York Giants this past offseason, and he is a former Atlanta Falcon. So background on him. He was an undrafted free agent out of Wesley in 2018. He was inactive for all 16 games for the Atlanta Falcons, so he did not play at all. Uh, he actually was active in Week 16, but just didn't play. So, yeah, he basically was inactive for all 16 games. Um, in 2019, he played a total. Now, let's get this total up. He played a total of five games, and then in 2020, he played... In 16 games where he started four of them. Um, I have some specific stats right here. And overall, he's just a versatile player. Does that mean he's all pro at every position he plays? No. But with that uh, being said, he can play left tackle. He can play left guard. He can play right guard. He can play right tackle. Has not played center, though. So he can play all around the offensive line, basically. Uh, to be fair, though, where he's logged more than 50 snaps, here's how he performed. Shouts to Justin Penick for the tweet, though. Uh, logging the stats. Against Dallas, which took place, I believe, in 2020. That was in week two. He only gave up one pressure at right tackle. Against the Chicago Bears in 2020, where he played right tackle as well, he gave up three pressures and no sacks. Uh, against the Chargers, against Joey Bosa in that tough Los Angeles Chargers defense. Let's see what year that was. That was 2020, where he played 100% of the snaps. He didn't give up a pressure or a sack. Against Tampa Bay, which could have been either year, to be fair, because, well, you know, uh, they're divisional rivals. But, yeah, it was 2020, uh, where he was a right tackle against... The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he gave up a total of four pressures, and he played, let's take a look, 77% of the snaps in that game. Atlanta was the home team, just to add that in. And then against Kansas City, where he was at left guard. That was during, let's see, I believe that was the 2020 season as well. Take a look real quickly. Yep, that was 2020. We were played... 68 snaps was 100% of the snaps uh, on offense. He had six pressures in a sack. So he is really not a best fit interior-wise. But then again, maybe coaching can fix that up just a tiny bit. Overall, he does come in as a versatile tackle. Someone who can also play on the inside if injuries were to go rampant on this football team. And if, of course, he was to make the roster. So his competition... I talked about this with Carter Coughlin, and I think I have with other candidates in the past. He's versatile, which means there's pros and cons that come with it. Pros, that he can play two positions. The problem with that is there's a lot of guys, A, on this roster that can play inside and outside. B, well, there's just more competition overall. Guys that can just play guard, guys that can just play tackle, guys that can just play center, and also guys that can play both inside and outside. So Max Garcia is one of those players 
The New York Giants signed him from Arizona. He played center last year. He also played guard, played better at center. Devery Hamilton, I think he's an undrafted free agent. Don't much don't know much about him. Roy M from Nigeria. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, so I'm going to spare the butchering. Corey Cunningham, the New York Giants signed him to the practice squad last year. Can play only offensive tackle, was a tackle with the Patriots, was a tackle with Cardinals. Jamil Douglas, who I believe can play center as well, was a veteran offensive lineman with Miami. He was a veteran offensive lineman with the Washington football team. And then the Buffalo Bills, well, that's not necessarily in order, but yes, he did play with those three football teams, uh, center and guard. Ben Bredesen has been taking snaps at center, so possible versatility stretch there, but mostly a guard, left guard most of last season. Uh, Rotational-wise, because Skur would get injured or Skur moved to center, uh, for instance, against the Bears, and he slid in over at left guard, rotated with Derek Kelly. Matt Parrott, uh, he could possibly move inside, but then again, the ACL might limit that. So he's probably just a tackle at this point. Josh Rivas, Kansas State uh, undrafted free agent, offensive lineman, uh, mostly a guard. And then Shane Lemieux looks could be possibly a lock for this roster, but he is a guard. And, you know, there was a time where he was taking snaps at center. I don't think that's going to happen, though. So how can he win? Stretch the versatility and win as many reps inside and outside as possible. This goes against twos and threes. He's probably not getting one snaps. I mean, imagining the offensive line right now, it's going to be Thomas. It's going to be Shane Lemieux, which I'm surprised at. I'm surprised they didn't put Garcia in, but Shane Lemieux. Center, probably John Feliciano. Right guard, Mark, Mark Lewinsky. And right tackle, Evan Neal. So there's not really any room there unless... One of the guys gets injured or, you know, let's just say Andrew Thomas, God forbid, isn't ready for training camp. He isn't ready for the preseason games. So it's a possibility he could step up to the one, but most likely with the twos and threes. I imagine him mostly playing tackle, though, because there is uh, some tackle competition. And to be honest and fair, he probably is the most experienced, um, you know, Tied with Matt Parrott, most likely. You look at the other tackles, Devery Hamilton, not much experience. Corey Cunningham, who's played a total of 30 games, so there's that. Uh, then again, it also comes with, you know, how good of a player are you at your position. And then Roy from Nigeria, not much experience there, so we'll see what he does in uh, the preseason. That could honestly be a Austin Drugsma like signing. I remember a few years ago they signed Austin Drugsma, who was a shot putter in college, played high school uh, football, but they didn't end up signing him. He was out of Florida State, I want to believe. Or, I sh- you know, I think so. Anyway, so there's not much competition. Well, not, not there's not much competition there, but there, there's not much experience there. And that's honestly what you're going to see out of this backup offensive tackle competition, if you will. So, stretch the versatility, win as many reps inside and outside against the twos and threes, and, you know, stretching that versatility, play well on the inside as well. How can he lose? Struggle against the twos and threes, stays off the field due to injury. He did have a surgery that was about a year ago. He stayed out the entire 2021 season on the PUP list and then was cut, but he should be on the field now. I believe he is because I think he took over a couple times for Andrew Thomas uh, during minicamp. Obviously, we'll see what training camp brings. But if he struggles against the twos and threes, and if he stays off the field for some reason due to injury, that's honestly how he will lose. And, you know, it seems basic. I say that a lot in these videos that the reasons seem basic. But right now, honestly, he's not really fighting an uphill battle because you look at the competition to tackle, at least, that's probably where they're going to play him. Devery Hamilton, not much NFL experience at all. Uh, Roy from Nigeria, uphill battle. Corey Cunningham. And the thing that separates uh, Matt Gano from Matt Pear and Corey Cunningham is that, well, guess what? He was brought in by this new regime. Cunningham and Pear stayed over from the last regime. So there's that. And that's not necessarily a positive for Cunningham and Pear. But final prediction, I have him making the 53-man roster. Something that Joe Shane predicated his signings on in terms of the offensive line was versatility. Brought in Jamil Douglas. Now, whether they make the roster or not, we'll see. Jamil Douglas has played guard and center. Max Garcia has played guard and center. 
Um, you know, Evan Neal, when we drafted him, obviously plays uh, offensive tackle, can play offensive guard as well. Marcus McKeithen can play center and guard. Uh, Joshua Zudu, guard and tackle. So versatility is absolutely the theme of the offseason, whether they're good, bad, and different players. But versatility is the theme of the offseason, and I think the Giants are going to stick with it, and they will take Matt Gano onto their roster. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you know when a live stream pops up your drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. NY News TV Day is on Saturday, so if you're a Yankee fan or even a Met fan, a supporter of the channel, come out uh, to the Yankees game against the Astros. Buy those tickets. If you need a link, please let me know. Please. I'll be happy to give it to you. You can also search it on Twitter, but if you need me to give it to you, I will give you the link. Um, going to be a fun day. I'll be there with a couple of content creators in terms of the Yankees, you know, NYY News TV. Donald Stewart's going to be there. I, I think Sean's going to be there, so you'll be, able, you'll be able to meet him in person if you've, you know, never met anyone on this channel. Um, share this out as well. Once again, dead time in the offseason. Sharing it out will get a lot of views and a lot of uh, discussion, of course. I want this uh, roster mobile series to get as many views as possible. Uh, five star rating on Apple Podcasts for both Twin Bill and Big Blue in the Bronx. I appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. And also tonight is the uh, NBA draft, so we'll be streaming that. Clutch B Ball TV, I think, is supposed to come on, and Donald Stewart as well. Peace out, guys. See you later. Stay cool.